So hello everybody, it's the 7th of March, um, it's around about 5.30 and we're just up to do a fair few things on the land. Kate's got this suspicious package, so do you want to explain what it is? Uh, this is yet another bag of worms, um, but not the dentrobana worms, these are tiger worms. Let's have a look at them. So these are going to be the other composting worms and they're going to help us create some very fast compost. Uh, oh. This is another 100 grams, so let's, Yum. let's whack them in. <laughs> let's go whack them in. So this is our wormery, guys. It will be stacked up properly eventually. We're just setting it off for now. So, they've already gone inside the compost there. There's one. Yeah, I can and see it. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's put these worms in. Now, if any of you are looking to there create a wormery, oh, wow. one thing that's really important to note that is don't put too much citrus in. We put a little bit, a little bit's fine. If you put too much in, it can actually create a very acidic environment it and it. it can prevent the worms from actually breeding. Yeah. And you want the worms to breed. Um, so try and keep it to sort of pH neutral things like here we have some um, collard greens, we've got potato peelings. Um, go. We've actually got a duck egg from our failed hatching. So these are actually, um, from the incubator they haven't got any um chicks in them uh they just never got so, to that stage yeah so we're no longer let's have a you guys be free wow look at these so these are different to the other ones oh they're huge look they, at this one they are yeah look at you. they're a nice size look at you yeah and the others were more stripy than these ones but these ones there are called tiger worms which is a bit strange yeah ah there we go and this one has a little yeah see, see that segmentation the others didn't seem to have that much whoa they're already going for it so great the seller of uh, these particular uh, worms was very very good actually and put in a little label saying how to check if your worms are alive because if you're buying them on the post sometimes for various reasons the worms might not survive and what you're looking for are really nice shiny bodies um, and you can actually express um, a part of their body and that will tell you if they're alive or not so there you, go. you can um, touch yeah. their bottom <laughs> yeah there you go. So they're already starting to they go down into wow. the bottom of the compost. And what they'll do, they'll slowly turn this into uh, detritus like this, into very fine tilth. And what all we have to do is then put another we box. We already have worm fertiliser at the bottom of the box. Look at that. Look at that. That is amazing. Wow. So we're going to put this 10 to 1 ratio. Oops. And that will ensure that uh, we've got the perfect yep. ratio then. Or, uh, oh, yeah. there's another worm in there. I have to get up. I have to grab him. <laughs> Are you stuck, little buddy? Little finger, maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah, little finger. I'll get that now. <laughs> Excuse me. The great worm rescue. This is a worm rescue. <laughs> there you go. I'll get them out. <laughs> I'll leave you to rescue the yeah, sorry <laughs> little worm. But no, that's us creating um, the wormery. Uh, we also have our compost bins here. Now I'm starting to think that we might need to remove these and burn them in the incinerator to create biochar rather than just leave these to rot because these will take a very long time. And these are all uh, nettle roots. Um, this is our food waste section. So we have uh, lots of food peelings. We've got cardboard there, uh, the usual stuff. And I do actually add in a uh, compost starter as well. Now we have been planting a few bulbs and such. So, just in this front bed here, which is now sort of conveniently lined so I can start barking this area, uh, we have some first early potatoes in here. Um, and these ones are swifts. So these are the first first earlies. Um, and they're a beautiful, very sweet, small potato. Um, excellent in salads or just boiled and buttered. Um, and they will create very large, very fruitful clusters. So we've got them all the way along the front here. We've also got a selection of Charlottes to go in. So they're um, another type of early, so they'd be called the second earlies. Um, yes. Do you have anything else to add, Aries? I think Aries is slightly in love with me because every time I'm here, he will follow me up and down the fence and make a lot of noise. And he loves cuddles. He's essentially a dog. Aren't you, Aries? Hey. Handsome boy, yes. But anyway, so what we're going to do today... Oh, fantastic. There we go. There we are. A life is spared. 
So we're going to carry on filling in the uh, soil here. So the mushroom compost is going on top of the cardboard. Kate is using a uh, no-dig uh, method, which is utilised by um, Charles Dowding um, and other such no-dig gardeners, but we are pretty much following just Charles Dowding at the moment and a little bit of uh, John Seymour. But we'll continue along the bottom here and then we've got another crop of potatoes to go into because what Kate wants to utilise this bed for is potatoes this year and then we're going to go up into sort of larger vegetables and then finally corn in the very top one. Next to month, add? I do. Um, so next month there's something that's really going to be bugging us. <laughs> Actually, uh, bugs. Um, we're going to be breeding black fly larvae. Why? Uh, that doesn't that sound disgusting? Well, they they'll provide uh, protein and fats for our poultry, both chicken, the ducks, and uh, the quail. Because so let's be honest, guys. Yeah. Some of you might still be asking why we're even doing this. Um, it's not just about being self-sufficient. We are what, we'd, what you'd call future-proofing. And the way things are going, people might have seen it on the news. Um, the system is very slowly starting to cave in on itself with the prices, inflation, um, the farmers protesting. Food is gonna become a great issue for a lot of people very soon. And people are gonna start to feel the pinch. So what we wanna do is be able to not right, only provide resources. for ourselves, but provide enough resources for our animals. So of course we'll have to be able to scythe um, grass and turn it for hay if we need it for Aries. Uh, we can use bracken from these neighboring slopes, dry that out, use it for bedding. Um, the black fly and maggots we can use for um, our chickens and our they ducks. They also produce excellent compost and even yeah. more fertilizer for the yeah. garden. And even for the quail, but the quail, yeah. the quail a bit more wild. They'll eat a lot more bugs and worms and things. Yeah. Um, but yes, any larger animals like chickens do need a bit more of a substantial diet. So that's what we're doing. And I'm not really ashamed to say it. We are future proofing. People might think we're a bit weird, but it works for us, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's the main thing. <laughs> but no, we love in. We just love being here. We enjoy sharing all this yeah. knowledge with you. Please continue to follow and uh, share our our content and watch as we build this yeah. project definitely come and visit as well that would be nice <laughs>